Good morning guys, this is Ronnie Velasquez with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, California Properties and I am so glad that you're here in today's class. Today we're going to be talking about the two-part series that we have of working with sellers. In the morning class we're going to be discussing the pre-listing appointment and in the afternoon we're going to be talking about the, the listing appointment, the actual listing appointment, alright? So this is going to be a 30-minute segment based on a three-hour class that we have here in the room. So. I know I'm going to go a little bit fast on some of the items that we're going to be talking about, but remember, this is a 30-minute segment of a three-hour class. So I invite you all to come to the actual three hours. We have them here on Saturdays. If you want to know the schedule, please ask your manager, send us an email, and we'll be more than happy to comply with you. So um, this morning, we're going to be talking about the pre-listing presentation. Now, uh, why a pre-listing presentation? What is the reason of a pre-listing presentation? Well, the reason for a pre-listing presentation is as follows. Uh, in order for you to take a listing, there's an actual process that exists that you need to take in order to take a listing. There's certain things that need to be done before you can actually take a listing. So uh, the, the problem with this is that if you're going to take a listing and you don't do the process uh, the way it is, chances are it's not going to be beneficial for you and, uh, and also it's not going to be beneficial for your clients. So I think we have to discuss what the process is. Now the process of taking the listing goes something like this. First of all, you have to create rapport with the people, right? Then, then you have to pre-qualify them. Then you have to ask pertinent questions. Then you have to show them what, the, what you're going to do in order to market and sell their homes. Then you're going to have to talk about the sales pricing strategy for their home. And finally, you're going to be talking about the commission structure. So as you can see here, there's a step-by-step -step process that you need to follow in order to get a listing. The problem that I find is that if you try to do all of this process in one listing appointment, uh, let's say in one hour or two hour listing appointment, chances are you're not going to be able to do all of that. You know, see, And that's the reason why I always tell people you need to split it in half. You need to do the pre-listing appointment. You need to go there and talk to them, etc., etc. And then once you have talked to them and pre-qualified them, ask them the important questions, uh, talk a little bit about yourself, about the company, and I talked a little bit about them and their goals and dreams, etc., etc., then you need to set up the actual listing appointment. So we're going to go through that process right now. Now, before we start talking about the pre-listing appointment, I want to talk to you about an important thing, which is the profile of a client. Now, you see, before you actually take a listing, people have to become your clients. It, it's important, you see. So it, the problem that we have is we don't understand what a profile of a client is. And I want to explain to you in, in short version what a profile of a client is. And I'm going to use this graph in order to define it. So I'll show you this. So I have this quadrant here. I have this quadrant here. And we're gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is a profile of a client. So this is a profile of a client, you see? And we're going to give each one of this quadrant 25% because they have a 25% value on each one of this quadrant. So you take 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, and you equal 100%, right? So in order for a person to become a client, there are certain things that need to happen before they become a client. Number one, these people need to know you. They need to know you. So they need to know you. They also need to like you. Now watch this. Uh, just because somebody knows you, that doesn't mean they're going to like you. You know, in the business, you know, as we go out there and we have conversations with a lot of people, you will meet some people that they don't like you. You see, and, and, and so if they don't like you, chances are they're not one to do business with you. So, first of all, they have to know of you. They have to know what you do for a living. They have to know how long have you been in the business, how much knowledge and experience do you have, how many properties have you sold, or you and your company have sold. So there's a lot of things that they need to know about you before they actually give you an opportunity to give you the listing. So they need to know you. And this is part of the pre-listing appointment is for them to have an opportunity to get to know you. The second thing is that they have to like you. Once again, like I said, just because they know you, that doesn't mean they're going to like you. So creating rapport or getting people to like you is an important part of this process and we're going to talk about that in a second. The next part is that after they know you and after they like you, the next step is that they need to trust you. They need to trust you. They need to trust that you're going to do a good job for them, you see? They need to trust you. There are some people that you know, probably right now, at this moment, there are some people that you know that they know you and they like you. Let's say family members, friends, something like that, right? But they don't trust you. 
Maybe you're too new in the business. Maybe you don't have a lot of experience. Maybe you don't have a lot of knowledge, you see? So because they don't trust you, they're not willing to give you the business and they're not willing to refer you other clients. And that's the next part. They need to trust and make sure that you have enough experience and knowledge in order to take care of their house, which by the way, selling their house, their house is the single biggest financial investment they're gonna do in their life if they're selling the house, right? They wanna make sure they put it in good hands. And that's why they need to trust you, all right? So that's the next part. And then the next part is, the, the next step of the process after they know you, like you, and trust you, the next part of the process is that they have to want to do business with you. They want to do business with you. So let's put it down here. Yeah. Do business business with you. I'm going to get it really, really small because I can't, I don't have any more space. So they want to do business with you. Yes. Some people that you know, they like you. Some people, they trust you. Some people, so, some people they, they know you, like you, and trust you. But guess what? Just because they like you, know you, and trust you, that doesn't mean they want to do business with you. Let me give you an example of that. One day I would call one of my, uh, one of my past clients and I said, Hey, David, I said, uh, if you were to sell your home, would you call me to list your property? He said, No, I won't. I wouldn't. And I said, Oh my God, why not? And he said, Well, Ronnie, I know you for a long time and I like you a lot and I know you have a lot of experience, so I trust you completely. But here's the thing though my mother and my sister, they're both real estate licensees. And if I ever list my house, I'm going to give them the business. And I said, well, I can understand that. I can appreciate that. So this person, even though they know me, like me, and trust me, this person doesn't want to do business with me. So there you go. That is not a profile of a client. So let's go to the last part. The last part is this. After they do business with you, they want to listen to you. So after you're already doing business with us, they, they want to listen to you. And they have to listen to you because if they don't listen to you, that means that they don't respect you as a professional. They don't respect you. And if they don't respect you, chances are maybe you shouldn't be doing business with them. So this is a profile of a client. This is the first thing that we need to understand in taking a listing is that in order for you to take that listing, these people need to either be in the process of becoming a client or already be a client for you by knowing you, liking you, trusting you, wanting to do business with you, and listen to you. That's important. All right? So let's go to the next part. The next part goes like this. Yeah. All right. There you go. The next part goes like this. Creating report. So we're going to talk about creating report right now because creating report is part of them knowing you, liking you, and trusting you, right? So you need to create report. Can you create report very, very easily and very fast? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But in order to create report easily and fast, you need to follow the process. There is actually a process to create report. So what you want to do is you want to be able to meet with these people. So let's say, for example, what we call the pre-listing appointment. Let's say, for example, somebody calls me and they say, hey, Ronnie, I'm thinking about selling my house. The next thing I say, I say, great, when can I come and see your house? And then, and then sometimes people will say, well, you know, we're not ready to list it yet. And I'll say, that's fine. I'm not ready to list it either. I just want to come and see the house. I want to talk to you. I want to meet with you. I want to, I want to have a conversation with you. You know, that's what this business is about. It's about having conversations with people. So I say, okay, great, come on in. So the next thing that I need to do, if I don't know these people, like if they're not my past clients, maybe they're a referral, or somebody that calls me from one of the flyers or something like that. The next thing that I want to do is I want to build report as fast as I can. So build report as fast as I can. So how do we build report as fast as we can? Number one, the first thing, bring or give them something of value. Number one, bring or give them something of value. Now watch this. You have to be careful with this because if you bring them a mug, that has your picture all over it, that's not really giving something of value. That's a marketing piece. You know, you just gave them a marketing piece. That's not something of value, right? Something of value is something that they're gonna enjoy. Something that they're gonna enjoy, see? Sometimes I like to bring things that they can eat. You know, things that they can enjoy and they can eat because, you know, it's great. You know, people enjoy food and things like that, right? But so, but you have to determine at your own pace, you know, what is it that you can bring these people with something of value, right? Once again, if you bring them a mug with your, your picture on it, if you bring them some marketing pens, if you bring them some calendars with your picture on them or something like that, that's not something of value. That is just a marketing piece. So that, that doesn't count. All right, so number one, bring them something of value, all right? Number two, find something in common. Find something in common. As a matter of fact, yes, you know, people like to deal with people, you know, who think like them and act like them and talk like them. That's just normal human nature. You know, why do you think we have so many groups and organizations? You know, anybody belongs to the Red Cross? 
anybody belongs to um, Doctors Without Borders, PETA, you know, animal rights, you know, civil rights, you know, uh, it, it, other types of rights and things like that. Why do you think we group ourselves? You know, the Moods Lodge, the Rotary Club, all of these different clubs, right? We, we group ourselves because we're grouping people, you know, we're human beings who like to group themselves with people who think like them, act like them, and do things like them, right? So the next thing that you need to do is you need to find something in common. In order to be accepted into the group, you need to find something in common. So um, this is one thing that I do when I do the uh, pre-listing appointment. I'll tell them, can you show me the home? You know, just show me the home, right? And they say, oh, yeah, well, fine, let's go and see the house, and they'll see this is the living room, and this is the bathroom, and this is the bedroom, and this is the kitchen, etc. And I'm not looking at the living room, bathroom, bathroom, etc. What I'm looking for is I'm looking at the portraits on the walls, I'm looking at the uh, trophies on the mantle. I'm looking at the magazines on the table. And I'm trying to find something that connects me with these people, right? And once I find it, I start a conversation about it. So let's say, for example, I see that they have a portrait on the wall. They, there's a, it's a family portrait. And they have four kids. I will say something like this. Oh, my God, I have four kids. You have four kids? And they'll say, yeah, I have four kids. And then I'll go from there. And I say, fantastic. I'm, what are the ages of your kid? And they'll just say, well, my son is 30 and 25 and 20 and 18. And I'll say, oh my God, my, my son is 18 also, you know, and what school do they go to and what, what games do they play and where do they go on vacation and, you know, and all the things and challenges and experiences you have as a parent, you know, and then now we can relate, uh, 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 we can relate to them to the level of being a family member, being a parent of four kids, et cetera, et cetera. Let's say, for example, that you find them and they, uh, they have a uh, picture, you know, of uh, them fishing, for example, fishing, for example, right? And I'm a fisher, fisherman, right? I, I don't do fisherman, but by the way, but let's say I, I, I like to go fishing. I can say, oh my God, you, you fish? What kind of fish do you, do you fish? You know, where do you go? What, are you a, a river fisher or you go to the ocean to fish or things like that, right? Um, Etc. Etc. So you're always looking for this thing that will connect you to these people. Once you establish that connection, it, 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 it's like you becoming a part of their group because you you belong, so to speak, right? That's part of creating rapport. This is that sense of belonging that you belong to the group, right? And that can only be found with uh, finding a something in common. Now sometimes it's really hard to find something in common because let's say for example you go to see a house and the house is a vacant property, so there's nothing in the house, right? Or worse yet, it's tenant occupied, so that means that everything in the house doesn't belong to them, it belongs to the tenant, right? So really hard to, to, uh, to kind of get that relationship going when nothing in the house belongs to them. So the next part is using the FORD formula, F-O-R-D, FORD, like the car, F-O-R-D, which stands for Family Occupations, Recreations, and Dreams. So basically what you want to do is you want to start to talking to them about family, about occupations, about recreations and dreams. Like I said before, you can say something like, by the way, I have four kids. How many kids do you have? You know? Or you can say, by the way, I lived in my property for 15 years. How long have you lived in your property? Do you like it there? How long, uh, if you were to sell, and uh, when are you going to uh, move next? You know, what brings you to, to that place? You know, you have family members there. Oh, your sister is there. Your brother is there. Your son is there. Fantastic. What is their name? Where, or how do they, uh, you know, how old they are? And how long ago they moved there? And you start relating to these people to that level. In regards to occupation, you can say also things like, for example, what do you do for living? You know, and somebody will say to you, you know, I'm an engineer or an architect or something like that. And you say, oh, fantastic. Have you seen any of your, of your architectural pieces, you know? And then, you can, and then they start opening up to you. And they say, oh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I built this. I was in charge of building this uh, church or something. Have you probably seen them on Crescent Avenue, for example? And you say, oh, my God, I've seen that church. I've been there a couple of times myself, if that's been the case. So you can actually start relating to people just by asking those questions. In regards to recreation, where do you like to go on vacation? Where do you go on vacation? Where would you like to go on vacation? What places have you visited? Oh, you went to Hawaii? I've been to Hawaii. It's a fantastic place. Where, what island did you go in Hawaii? And how long did you stay there? And what things did you enjoy about Hawaii? And things like that, right? So you can start talking about that. And then finally, dreams. After you sell this property, where are you going to move next? What are you going to do there? How long are you going to be there? You know, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see by using the Ford formula, you can actually start asking questions that creates conversations that gets you to find things that you have in common. And that's important. All right, the next thing. We'll go to the next part. Give heartfelt compliments. Give heartfelt compliments. Now, you got to be careful with this because you don't want to just give compliments just to give compliments, right? You want them to be heartfelt compliments, things that you actually enjoy about themselves, about their, their house, or what they have done with the property, etc., etc. I, I know in, few, in a few cases, for example, let me give you an example of this. 
I went to this property one day and I absolutely love what he done to the landscaping. Like the landscaping is fantastic, best grass in the world I ever seen. Best grass in the world of the world I ever seen. The the flower the flower beds are fantastic. Everything is beautiful, right? So I told the owner, I said, my God, I really love what you have done to the landscaping. I mean, it's fantastic. I mean, I wish I could have done that in my house. Like I have absolutely no experience on landscaping and things like that, but I, I love what you have done. As soon as I said that, you should have seen the face and, and the owner's face, uh, the happiness that he, uh, that he got from what I said. You know, he was really proud about the uh, landscape and the work that he has done on the landscape, right? So you can see this. And, and then he started opening up. He starts telling me, oh, you know, when I bought the property, the grass was dead. There was a big, big old tree in here that I had to cut down. It took us forever to cut it down. And we had this nice conversation about all the things that they have done to improve the landscape on their home. So when you start when you start giving heartfelt compliments and, and they have to be true and they have to be from the heart you cannot fake these things right people start opening up to you and you can start conversations with them because that's what the business is about is about having conversations with people the next thing on the list uh, mirror and matching mirror and matching um, one thing that I said at the beginning you probably noticed this I said people like people who talk like them you know act like them move like them in so many words right so one of the things that you can do is you can also mirror and match now it doesn't have to be creepy or anything but you can mirror and match very subtly so uh, uh subtly uh the, the the movements that they have for example if if i'm talking to one of the sellers and the seller does something like this i can go and do something like this uh, or if they do something like that then i can go and do something like that you know you're mirroring and matching their attitude their posture the way they speak the rate of speech the, the rate of speech is important if somebody speaks to me really slow like you know me i'm always like a thousand miles an hour right if somebody speaks to me really slow and they go like we're running you know we uh, have been living here for about 10 years then what i need to do is i need to really slow down and i go down to the level and i say well you know i i, I i'm happy that you decided to call me and list your own for you and things like that and if somebody speaks really fast like i, I speak really fast right somebody goes speak really fast and they say oh my god ronnie you know i'm so happy that you're here i'll go like oh thank you for inviting me I'm, I, I really appreciate you calling me you know and things like that so you have to match the speed um which they talk and how they move and things like that right now once again it doesn't have to be creepy so if they start you know um, putting their finger in their ear you're not gonna put your finger in your ear because that's gonna be really creepy right so you, it has to be very subtle and, and, and this helps you, you know, engage them more and they, they feel like they're bringing you in, into the group. You know, that's basically the goal of this, create a rapport, is, is be the sense of belonging. So the next part is, the next one is make them laugh. Make them laugh. L listen, guys, I honestly tell you, if you, if you can make people laugh, you can make people for life. You, you can make clients for life if you make them laugh. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't have time right now because we only have a few minutes left. But I'll tell you this, during my class, I, 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 if, if you, any of you have come to my class and you know this to be true, I make them laugh from the beginning to the end because I know that if I make people laugh, they're going to like me better. Make people laugh and I promise you they're going to like you better. As a matter of fact, I had this experience in which I went to a listing appointment and I make them laugh and I make them laugh and I make them laugh. And unfortunately, we couldn't take the listing because they were not ready. They had to wait another couple of years in order to get the listing. And then, uh, then my uh, uh, one of my agents, who was the one to refer me to that listing appointment, right? She called me and she said, "Oh my God, Ronnie!" She said, "These people love you. What did you do to them?" And all I said was, "I make them laugh." That's that's all I did. Honest to God, I made them laugh. And I know that sometimes it's really hard to make people laugh because there's some people that are kind of like stiff. They, they don't really like to laugh. But God, boy, you gotta try to make them laugh because once you get them going, I promise you this, they're gonna like you more. So that's important as well. The next thing is avoiding these topics. Avoiding these topics of conversation. Never, ever talk about religion, politics, and sports. And I'll tell you the reason why. People have very strong opinions about their politics, religion, and sports. You, you're never gonna win. It doesn't matter what happens, you're never gonna win. You're gonna say something or they're gonna say something is which is you're gonna say something they're gonna you're gonna offend them or they're gonna say something to, that is gonna offend you and then the relationship is over so stay away from those topics of conversation religion sports and and politics all right so that's that let's go to the next part the next part is the process of the appointment the process of appointment goes something like this number one build rapport as fast as you can now watch this it may seem to you like it's a lot of work and it's gonna take a long time I can honestly tell you that I can build rapport with people 
in less than five minutes. Less than five minutes. Less than five minutes. I meet people like me, trust me, want to do business with me, and want to listen to me by just the way that I convey all the things that I convey, by listening to them, by paying attention, by mirroring, matching, by saying heartfelt compliments, by, by, you know, by answering questions, et cetera, et cetera. All of the things that we do to make people like us and trust us. It doesn't take a lot of work, and it doesn't take a lot of effort, and it doesn't take a lot of time. You can actually build rapport with people in less than five minutes if you do it right. So that's number one. Step number one of the pre-listing appointment is to get is to uh, build rapport with the people. Step number two of the pre-listing appointment is qualify them for the three qualifying methods that we always have. You always have to qualify people for three things. Number one, motivation. Number two, urgency. And number three, market expectation. Why motivation? Motivation, why? Because when motivation is high, any problems that happen during this transaction are gonna seem really low. But when motivation is really low, any problems will seem really high. I'll tell you what, a motivated seller is more willing to accept a low ball offer. A motivated seller is more willing to be able to agree to pay the seller the seller concessions for closing costs. A motivated seller is gonna be willing to work with the buyer in order to get this transaction closed. An unmotivated seller is not gonna be willing to do any of those. So you need to find yourself with motivated sellers, people who really want to sell the house and really have a reason to sell the house, so that's important. So what is the question you ask in order to find motivation? The question that you ask is why? 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 Why do you want to sell your house? That's the question. It's a simple question to ask. So as I'm going through the property, I can look at the property and I say, by the way, you have a fantastic kitchen, or you have a fantastic house, or you have a fantastic location, whatever that is, right? And I can say, my God, you have a fantastic location. Why in the world would you like to sell? Why? And then I wait for the response, and they will say something like, well, I want to sell because we're being relocated, or I want to sell because I want to move out, move up on the property, or, or I want to sell because I cannot afford the payments anymore, because it happens in our business. Some people don't, cannot afford the payments anymore. They need to downsize a little bit, which is totally fine, but they need to have a reason why. If I ever ask the questions to somebody, which I have, and I have gotten this response, and I say, why do you want to sell your house? And somebody said, well, we don't really want to sell it. We just want to put it on the market and see if somebody will buy it. Maybe you don't want to take that listing because that person is not really motivated to sell. They'll probably overprice the property. They're probably not going to work with you or work with the buyers, right? So probably you don't want to take that listing. I'm just saying, all right? So they need to be motivated to sell. That's number one. So why? Ask the question, why? Why? Why do you want to sell your house? And see what they respond. Number two, the next one is, urgency how fast they want to get out of this property i want to work with people who have an urgency to move out of the property so when i ask the question the question is when you know when by when would you like to be done with this process by when would you like to have this house sold by when would you like to move into your next home etc etc right so you need to ask the question by when so when you ask the question by when they'll give you an answer you know you say by when would you like to be this process to be done and you, they say well as soon as possible great i like that or they say well in the next 30 to 60 days fantastic 90 days no problem if somebody says to me well you know what i have absolutely no urgency to sell my house as a matter of fact you can take a two-year listing two-year listing you know they got two-year listing you take two years to sell the property i probably won't take that listing because i want people who are motivated to sell right now urgency it's important. The last part of this important is market expectation. What are they expecting from the market? What are they expecting from the market? So watch this. The question for market expectation is how much? How much? And you can ask those questions to both buyers and sellers. So for the buyer is how much is the maximum price that you can you want to pay for your property? For the seller is how much do you want for your home? How much do you want for your home? All right. So you ask them the question. I promise you this. Most people, before you even put a foot in their door, they already know how much they want for their property. You don't have to go there with a thousand CMAs and, and you know, statistic analysis and then market reports and heat zone and all of these things. Guys, just ask them the question, how much do you want for your home? And I promise you, 85% of the time, they'll tell you how much they want for the property. Now, whether that's right or wrong, that's a completely different thing. I covered that during the training class, but right now I don't have time to go over that. But here's the thing. They, if you ask them how much they want for the property, 85% of them, they will say exactly how much they want for the property, and you can go from there. So asking how much is important, all right? So that's important. Let's go to the next part. Gathering information. The, proper, the process of the pre-listing appointment. The next part is gathering information. Right there. Gathering information. So what information do you need to gather? Number one, you need to verify the information on the title report. You see, 
you need to uh, verify the information on the title report because title profiles, that is a profile, a property profile is like a birth certificate. It tells you all the details about the property, like the date it was built, how many bedroom, bathroom, square footage, and things like that, right? So the pro title profile comes from the county, all right, comes from the county. The problem is that over the years, some people, as they're reselling the property, they're making upgrades into the property. They're making the property bigger, adding square footage, adding bedrooms and bathrooms, adding swimming pools and jacuzzis and things like that, right? And the title profile doesn't, doesn't reflect that. And the reason why is because when you do an addition to your property, you get, uh, you get the city to come in and they give you the okay, right? But the city comes in and give you the okay. Once you finish with all that, you have to report that to the county so the county updates the records. But most people don't know that they have to do this. And the people that know they need to do this, they don't do it because they don't want the property taxes to go up. So here's the thing. You need to verify that information because if you look at the property profile, it says, oh, this house is three bedroom, one bathroom, 1,300 square feet home. And when you go there, it's actually five bedrooms, three bathrooms, 2,300 square feet home. And all of a sudden, your, your market analysis is busted. It's busted because you're using the wrong data. So the first thing you need to verify is the square footage of the house, the square footage, bedroom, and bathrooms, and any, any other things that they have done to the property. So watch this. I will say something like this. The title, according to the title profile, it says your property is three bedroom, one bathroom and 1,300 square feet. Does that sound about right? You know, does that sound about right? And they say yes, and I say, okay, great, I can use this. If they say no, our house is actually five bedrooms and three bathrooms and 3,000 square feet, then you need to verify that information and make sure it's correct and the, and the square footage is legal. That's a whole nother conversation. But the thing is that you need to verify that information. Next thing that you need to verify, ask them how many loans they have against the property. How many loans they have against the property? Now, I used to say, how much do you owe against your property, which is incorrect, because some people very conveniently forget about all the loans they have against the home. So I had a situation in which uh, this gentleman wanted to sell the house, and I said, how much do you owe on the property? He said, 380000 And then when we got to escrow and we're about to close, it, it just happened that he had a second and a third against the property, and now he doesn't owe $380,000. He owes $500,000, and now he's upside down on the property. And I asked him, and I said, why you didn't tell me? He said, well, you didn't ask. And I said, oh my God, yeah, you're absolutely right. I never ask you how many loans you have. So you need to ask how many loans they have against the property. Once you ask that information, the next question is, how much do you owe against those loans? Whether it's one, two, three, or four. You know, and the last part here, uh, verifying information, is in regards to the, uh, in regards to uh, how many liens they have, okay. How much do you owe against those? And the last part is, in regards to the personality style. Now watch this. In regards to personality style, it's not a question you ask, but it's something that you figure out by, on your own. Now, I do not have the time to go into personality styles in this training. If you want to learn about personality styles, there's fantastic training out there. They call it the DISC Personality Profile, D-I-S-C, which stands for Dominant, Influential, Supporter, and Cautious. So you need to look at those at the DISC Personality Test. You go to Anthony Robbins or you go to our own coach in-house here, coach Debbie DeGroo, she offers this for free. So talk, if you learn what their personality style is, what you can do is you can actually customize your listing presentation to their personality so you can win it, all right? So guys, once again, the process of the pre-listing appointment, number one, is gathering, is, is, is creating rapport. Number two, is asking the right questions and pre-qualifying the seller. Number three, gathering information. And number four, finding out you know, the information regarding their personalities. If you follow this process and you're very successful at following this process, I promise you this, you're gonna create rapport so fast you're gonna get you you're gonna be you're gonna belong in their family right away and this can be done if you do it right but you have to learn the process once again i know this is a 30 minute training of a three hour uh training class so i want you guys if you like this part i want you to come to the class it's a three hour class we're gonna have a lot of fun you're gonna learn a lot of things I hope to see you here. Remember, in our company, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, California Properties, we have training every day of the week except for Sunday. The training is free, and all you have to do is RSVP and show up. It's on you now. Have a fantastic evening. Bye-bye.